Hi, it's Tea with Tea Quilts, and we're here today to do the October Tea Quilts Optional Block Drawing. If you don't know what that is, stay tuned. to get started and I hope that everyone is as excited as I am I can't even talk I'm so happy but I am going to be recording these blocks every month they'll come out the month before hopefully if things go as planned and you will be getting a PDF of instructions to tell you how you're supposed to make your block for this month October 2022 we're actually doing the jelly roll jam 2 which is a fat quarter shop free pattern that you can get online you can go over to fat quarter shop i will make sure i put a link down in the description box below so that you can go and download the complete pattern if you like for this month we're going to be making a block that finishes 12 and one half inches by 10 and one half inches unfinished which means when it's sewn into a quilt top it will be 12 by 10. So we're going to start out really easy. We're just going to be needing uh, from different color scraps. So any color of scrap fabrics. I ask that the block has eight different fabrics for a scrappy quilt top. Yes, you can make and turn in more than one block. So for cutting, you're going to need for each block, you'll need two 12 and one half by two and one half rectangles cut from different prints. And then you're going to need six each six and one half by two and one half rectangles cut from six different prints so total you're going to need eight different fabrics so we're going to start out very easy this month so here i received a bag of scrap fabrics from a friend in my quilt gill so what i did was i sorted them into color families and left them in the box so in this bag i have white tone on tones in here so that's what's in this bag then I've got like beige colors black prints red greens some purple is back here in the corner got a lot of blue and yellow so what I decided since I just brought this in last month uh, she gave me this at our July meeting I decided that instead of pulling out scraps, I already got these scraps out. So let's see if I can make blocks from what's in this box here. So first thing I got to do is at least get eight fabrics. So I'm just moving the bag so I got room to move things up and down. It doesn't matter what they look like. Uh, basically, we just want to make sure that I've got fabric that I can cut my pieces out of. And so if I want to make sure I've got a 12 and a half inch piece, this one is not going to work for a 12, it will work for a six. So I'll just slide it right there for now. Um, and then we don't want all of them to be in the same color family. We wanna go to different fabrics. So I am going to see if I can find some other stuff that I can use. This is a uh, seven and a half, so it'll work for some six inch pieces. And I don't know if this is two and a half wide. I do have some solid black in here I can use. Okay, this is a very long piece here, so we'll just take one of those out. Oops, it's actually a quilt backing. So it's longer than I thought. Let's see if we've got anything shorter. Just trying to use my shorter pieces first, but I may not. <laughs> so I am going to put you on fast forward. Again, another long piece, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and put it over there.
So I now have eight different fabrics, so I'm going to just move everything out of the way here. And I am actually going to go press these eight fabrics. So these are going to be for my long pieces right here. So that's going to be my two pieces that are two and a half by twelve and a half. And then I have six fabrics here. Two, three, four, five, and six. These six fabrics are going to be cut two and a half by six and a half. So I'm going to go press these and I'll be right back. I'm back with my pieces. These are the pieces that I right now intend to cut into six and a half inches by two and a half. These are the pieces that I was going to cut into two and a half by twelve and a half. And then as I was pressing, I realized that we're using two and a half inch strips. That if you've got leftover jelly roll pieces or pieces that you left have left over from when you sew your bindings on, if you use two and a half inch strips, these are great. So I went and got some of these from my sewing area. I always keep my extra strips. And then I just sew these all together when I want to put a scrappy binding on a quilt. They're already made whenever I produce a quilt that this will enhance. So I went and got some of those strips. So I'm going to be incorporating some of these strips in. And since I had a couple pieces of black here, I'm going to go ahead and take this black out and not use it. So uh, this piece here is going to be too big to cut into 12 and a half so I'm going to just place them over there. The other thing for me is that I'm going to be cutting more than for one block. I'm also doing this for my quilt gill so I'm going to make a block for them to swap. I'm also going to make a block for the tea quilts drawing and then I'm also going to make a block to keep for the setting quilt that I plan to do with all the blocks. So if you want to make two blocks I would recommend that and then at the end, whether you win or not, you'll have a quilt top that's a sampler quilt made from all of the blocks that we'll be making throughout the year. So, first thing I'm going to do is I need two strips. This is not five and a half, or this is not five inches wide, I mean, so I won't be able to get two strips. So all I'm going to do is just place this on top of each other. I'm going to get... A ruler and I am going to go in about 13 inches so that I at least got 13 inches from the end 12 3 quarters somewhere in that neighborhood and that I also have a little bit left I'm about three and I'm all, I'm about two and three quarters of an inch from the bottom here so I'm going to go ahead and cut this into two two and a half by twelve and a half and I'm only going to use each fabric once in a block but with me making three quilts or making three blocks not three quilts with me making three blocks I'm going to be able to cut multiples of my fabrics since they're not going to be used in the same quilt top so that's two I need a total of six of these this is just scrap trash and then this can go into my strings but while I'm working on this project I'm going to keep everything here because I may be able to use that somewhere else so I have two strips I need a total of six and I'm going to continue to cut now this strip here is exactly two and a half it was for binding so I will cut that, turn this around and cut 12 and a half. So I now have four strips and I need two more if I'm making three blocks. This strip would only be long enough to cut one. So I'm just going to double it up with another strip and we're going to go in to that 12 and a half, 12 and three quarter ish space and I don't like, okay, I don't like this strip, it's kind of curvy so let me see what this strip on the bottom is doing. 
and it's not exactly two and a half so either neither one of these will work in this scenario so I'm going to move replace those but I have other strips and so we will put this down at 12 and a half yeah this one will work get rid of some of the little straight threads here rotate around and cut 12 and a half by two and a half Now I have six two and a half by twelve and a half, and that's enough to make three quilt blocks. So I'm just going to stack these up. And now we need to cut six pieces from our pieces that are two and one half right here. And when we cut these, since we need six per block and we're making three blocks I'm going to need 18 two and a half inch strips so I am going to just stack up some fabric pieces here press this with the yarn and we're just going to cut I know for sure that these pieces are only going to get one so I'm just going to stack these up Cut six and a half by two and a half right there. And um, we'll just go ahead and cut down. Keep this and cut over. Rotate our stack around and now we can square it up to that six and a half by two and a half. And remember guys, I'm left-handed when I'm cutting, so, um, and I'm actually cutting on a table. Keep that piece and cut the little stragglies. All right, so that's three. And again, I told you that we're going to need 18 of those, so I'm going to just speed you guys up as I'm cutting. All right, we have our pieces are all cut now. So what we now want to do is some of my pieces I cut three out of. So I do want to go ahead and sort those into three different piles because remember, we're not using duplicate fabrics in our blocks. You can use the same fabric more than once, but you just can't put it in the same block. So this is here. So that's four. So two of these will be set up with this as number five. And then my sixth fabric that's cut two and a half by three and a half will be with these fabrics. So we also have these strips here that will go with these blocks as well. And then we have those as our two 12 and a half inch strips. So 
for each block set. So I'm going to just deal with one for right now. For each block set, you can go ahead and sew your 12 and a half along the long edges. So we'll put these right sides together and stitch a quarter inch. I can see mine's is a little bit small on one piece, my uh, strip that I cut from. So I'm going to use my bottom one to make sure I get my quarter inch seam correct on that. And then for these units, we're just going to place them how you want. If you want to put them in a particular order so that you mix up your colors, that's great. And then we're going to sew these into pairs. So we'll be flipping right sides together. And again, we're going to be sewing along the long edges. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Here we have our pieces that we have just sewn and I sewed them into pairs as I stated earlier and now we're going to go ahead and sew these three pieces into one long strip set. Uh, you don't have to worry about pressing right now and then we'll press everything at the end. I just want you to see that the fabrics are being sewn together. So now we'll just go sew all of these three pieces together. And I have done that on another block since I am doing plenty of those. And this is what you will end up with. It's something that looks like this. Those two pieces there. <laughs> and you can go ahead and now press. Now on this, the way that this block is put together, it doesn't matter how you press your seams. So just press your seams towards your darkest print on your strip set if you like and then on this one I just press them all to one side just one direction that doesn't even matter because no seams in this block will match up okay so now our final step is we're going to go and sew this seam right here and so we will be doing that part next so I will press these remaining I'll go sew these pieces together, press all of my other pieces, and then I'll come back and sew those together. So I'm back and I've sewn my seams and now the last step is to press your seams towards the long pieces. Just easier to do so. So I will press these that way and then I will come back. Okay. So now here we want to make sure that we square our blocks up to be 12 and 1 half by 10 and a half and I'll get a square up ruler and do that. And then the final step for swapping blocks, anytime you're doing a swap or a drawing, always put your name on the block. So let me press that seam again. <laughs> so I always write on top of a seam allowance. I just put my name on the seam allowance. So that way whoever gets the blocks, they know who made the block. And this pen is not writing, of course. So there we go with our name now written into the seam allowance there. All right, so you do that for all of your blocks. And then I will probably also, I like to starch my blocks too, so I will do that as well. 
these blocks go together in alternating rows and your first row is going to start with your block that way and then you're just going to rotate your blocks so as you're rotating blocks you notice that the seams do not match up and then here on this one you can start all of your rows where they in this column here they'll all be upright and then in this column they're all going the opposite direction so if you make this quilt it's a very easy quilt to make I've made it three times I'll show a photo of at least one quilt I'm sure I got one in my house somewhere I'll make sure I take a photo and add at the end of this video but this is a great scrap buster quilt and think these are using the same fabrics but think about when you're swapping or doing an optional block drawing that all the fabrics you get are going to be from different people so all of the fabrics are going to be mixed so these fabrics although they're the same in these blocks they're actually going into three different quilts so I will see you all next time. I hope you enjoyed your first block. Something easy. Something you could definitely do with your scraps. Again, you can use your leftover binding strips or leftover two and a half strips from any jelly roll that will cut these pieces. So that's it for this one. See you next time. Bye-bye.